What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the first August build of MSM Extended ROM on this device. And let me show you which build is this again and here the extended version over here says version 11.5 as you're noticing and on top we have the MSM Extended logo up there and we have some things written custom ROM redefined over here and as you can see the build date 1st August 2020 the latest one as of right now the Android version is 10 of course and let me scroll down the security patch is of July 2020 not quite to August yet on this build at least and to flash this ROM you definitely need a G apps so if you're flashing this ROM make sure you watch this video from the card right there and if you don't know how to flash it you can follow that video just make sure you flash the G apps in between like flashing after the ROM you flash the G apps then encrypt disabler and you reboot now this is based on OSS vendor not the MIUI vendor ROM. There will be another version I think which is based on MIUI vendor but this is based on OSS vendor. And the wallpaper looks very cool over here the stock wallpaper I am liking it over here. And some other things that I am gonna talk about in this video is that the stock launcher over here of course does have the double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen. So that's cool. Now let me unlock quickly and here let me show you the stock launcher settings actually. So if you go into the MISC settings over here, you will see this hidden and protected apps and that is kind of a app lock over here as you can see it's asking me for the fingerprint. I have locked some apps which I'll show you later on. We have the double tap to sleep over here. Let me reduce the brightness just a little bit and as you can see double tap to sleep is actually there and let's go into the app drawer. We have this show icon levels and stuff and if I go into the home screen, this is the settings that you get. You can also lock the desktop setup if you want to. And inside icons, we have the icon pack, add icons to home screen and stuff. To the left of the stock launcher, we do have this Google's Discover page. Swiping down gets you to the notification panel or the quick settings panel over here. So that's not a problem. And here, as you can see, this is the app drawer if you swipe up from the bottom. And you can search any app from here, as you can see. You can search any app just like this. So yeah, pretty cool. We do not have any suggestions panel. So that's what I'm liking over here. And the widgets on the home screen are working totally fine. Now let me show you the quick settings panel and as you can see we do have this screen recorder and you can like record with the screen recorder. This is not the oxygenous kind of screen recorder by the way and there is the internal or microphone audio choosing option. Then you can choose the video bitrate to like up to 20 Mbps and there is no option to change the frame rate or something so that's how it is but this screen recorder just works fine. And here we do have this FPS info. But I don't know why it does not work for me. As you can see, I just turned it on right now. As you can see, there is no FPS info appearing on the top left. So that's how it is. I cannot see the FPS info that might be just like happening with me. And you can also like change the themes and stuff from here. So that's really cool. It's really handy. And you can add more toggles just like this from here. There are a plethora of options for the quick toggles as you are noticing. Now let me show you the stock camera of course this is the ANX camera and switching between the like lenses are pretty fast not a problem. I don't know why the portrait mode is acting weirdly so that's how it is. Let me switch the front camera and as you can see the front camera is actually working fine and even the front camera LED if you notice that is working fine. In the video settings we do have up to 4k 60fps option for the rear camera and for the front camera let me show you we have up to 1080p 30fps option but the portrait mode is acting a little weird over here. I have also installed Google Camera 7 if you want to install it there is a card for you and night set and stuff with this Google Camera 7 should be working fine this is the unique version of the Google Camera. Well now what's interesting about this ROM I would say it's really similar to the Corvus OS and as you can see we do have still the Dolby Atmos and stuff and the sound quality over here is great but there is some problems when I'm doing some like WhatsApp or like two video calls. So yeah, the audio is like a little bit weird, but otherwise it is fine. Like with normal voice calling, the call quality is great. That's not a problem. In the system panel, we do have this system updater. And as you can see, you can check for updates. But right now, as you can see, it says failed to check updates for some reason. And here we can see the details of this build. And inside this networks and stuff, we do have this Wi-Fi calling as you can see. And let me show you the stock dialer. So there is good news that we do have the like call recording option over here. 
so that is very good we do not see it on most of the other roms so that is really good that we get a default like call recording option on the stock dialer over here and inside this extensions we have all the customizations and if you're looking at this panel looks very very cool in my opinion and as you can see on the quick toggles if you're noticing the gradient over here it has two tones so that's really cool i'll show you from this theme settings and as you can see over here we have the accent picker gradient picker etc so that's very good you can change or like set any color for the gradient and accent both separately and you can select the system theme from here light dark or like the pitch black and stuff everything is there and over here we have the extensions background you can have the gradient color in the background or something then random color you can have that and headline and body fonts are there plethora of fonts options are there then we have the icon shapes and stuff let me go back we have the status bar icons and then we have the status bar height and you can adjust the height of the status bar from here and you can set it to x large and as you can see right now the status bar looks very spacey so yeah you can set these kind of things if you have a tempered glass like me like it has really huge black borders you can have this to x large and that would look good i guess let me scroll down we have this ui radius you can change the radius of the ui i guess for with something let me select it to large and we have the settings dashboard icons like changing option we have the accent background plain and plain accent and stuff then we have switch styles this is the toggles over here you can change this to anything like telegram over here and as you can see these toggles has changed so yeah you can change anything from here and we have the quick setting tile styles you can change those of course then quick setting tint mode quick setting bright and dark option is there then gradient quick settings background is there lot of small little customizations all over the ui and we have the quick setting header style and you can change it to black gray light gray or transparent then opacity of the quick like settings and one ui you can have this kind of thing and then blur behind the background of the quick settings we have that option too now inside buttons we have this volume button and from here we have this volume panel on the right or left choosing option but let me talk about the volume panel here which i do not like and as you can see looks cool and you can expand it just like this but whenever like you are doing something on the volume panel i feel it's too much to the sides right now it's not going back but sometimes i have seen it going back from like whenever i'm doing this so in my opinion i would like this volume panel to be a little bit to the center or like something so yeah it is too much to the sides in my opinion let me go back we have the decor room and here we have the ambient display mode and you can customize this ambient display from here of course and then we have this animation style and there are plethora of options for this animation style we can change the screen of animation to crt scale or something like that let me go back we have the battery style and from here you have this battery like quick setting stuff and then we have the status bar battery icon changing option well no big dotted circle are there but that's fine and here we have the battery percentage position changing option you can choose it enabled or inside the icon and we have the custom charging flash kind of thing and we have the battery percentage when charging option we have the clock settings for the status bar and stuff you can increase or decrease the font size as you can see on the top left of the status bar it is decreasing and increasing the clock size so that is really cool let me go back we have the carrier label and stuff you can customize this too again and status bar logo is there you can set a custom logo and status bar weather is there too you can have the weather over here i guess let me okay so right now as you can see on the top corner over here it shows the temperature so that is really good let me go back and battery bar is there if you want to use the battery bar you can have that now let's go into the gestures here is how it looks like we have the usb gestures and we have the prevent ringing and stuff then gesture anywhere feature is there so you can customize the gestures from here so i would take screenshot is there and as you can see this is the asus kind of screenshot gesture where you get long edit share and delete option and here we have the screen of power button toggle torch works fine and then we have the lock screen and status bar double tap to sleep those are working fine too and inside lock screen let me show you we have this lock screen shortcut and here we have the changing option of this shortcut always show battery bar on charging is there i'll show you how it looks like as you can see it looks really beautiful while charging and of course the 18 watt fast charging is working fine again in the lock screen ui we have the clock and date kind of customization and over here i have customized it a little bit that's why it looks like this looks very cool in my opinion on the always on display looks very beautiful and in the icon manager we have these many fingerprint options so you can customize anything from here there are a lot of like fingerprint scanner customization 
icon customization i mean then we have the animation customization there are a plethora of options for the fingerprint scanner animations too over here you do not need to worry about anything over here and then fod pressed icon color you can choose it to solid green or something and here we have the lock screen visualizer then lock screen notification count and stuff is there let me enable that and lock screen charging info does appear again and it does look very cool and this fingerprint unlock or like always unlock with the fingerprint scanner is there and it is working super fine over here i have tested that after i reboot i do not have to enter the pin i can directly unlock with the fingerprint scanner so that is working totally fine no issues with that in the navigation panel this is how it looks like we have this enabling option and inside gesture navigation we have the android 10 kind of animation and whenever you are setting this gesture navigation of android 10 you get this advanced features so you can set a long swipe like right or left action so that's really cool and you can also use two or three button navigation and you can also like adjust the pill bar size over here so that's really cool let me go back we have the pulse on the navigation bar then pixel animation and stuff then show arrow keys is there while typing and stuff then we have the notifications we have the heads up disabling option of course or you can customize the heads up then we have noisy notification height smart replies notification ticker etc notification light settings for power app is there then we have this battery charging light on do not disturb mode force expanded notification is there ringtone focus mode is there then we also have this edge lighting option so you can change this edge lighting color if you want to like that should work fine and the ambient display brightness you can customize it from here then we have the in-call vibrations like vibrate on connect call waiting and disconnect then we have the blink for incoming call and toast app icon and stuff is there let me go to the power menu here is how it looks like and here as you can see we have this advanced reboot and stuff like that let me show you and if i tap on advanced and as you can see we do have directly rebooting to recovery or fast boot option of course then we have the quick setting stuff and here we have the column and row number customization and then we have the quick setting header customization etc then system info quick pull down etc is there and then brightness icon and stuff you can enable that or disable those so let me go into the status bar here we have the status bar items headset bluetooth etc icons are there of course then we have the network like traffic indicator i've been using a separate app for that and we have the volte changing option so you can change the volte logo to anything from here and we have the bluetooth battery stats brightness control so swiping on the status bar as you can see does adjust the brightness so this is a really handy feature for me at least i use it on a daily basis of course and here we have the breathing sms breathing missed calls etc let me go back we have the system settings here we have the smart pixel time state and dose settings etc are there adm notification pocket detection etc is there in the system now inside extras we have the rounded corners so you can adjust the padding over here i did adjust the status bar padding a little bit because it was too much of the corners charging animation of course while plugging in it does that pixel kind of animation again and we have that vibrate on plug or unplug and then wake up on charge you can disable that and you can change the screenshot type to from here in the battery settings this is how it looks like and as you can see the battery icon looks cool in my opinion and if you scroll down we have the battery temperature on the bottom charging cycle then current battery capacity and then design battery capacity is there and screen usage or screen on time is there then last full charge the battery life is decent you can get up to seven plus hours of screen on time over here so that is not a problem now in the display settings again we have these kind of animations we have the brightness level night light auto brightness or adaptive brightness then we have the auto rotate option and you can have this 180 degree option too if you want that then double tap to wake is actually working fine and game driver preferences are there dc dimming mode is there and by the way the default refresh rate of the screen on this rom is 66 hertz so that's really cool you are getting 66 fps right out of the box everywhere in the ui so that is very cool in my opinion now let's go into the sound settings here we have the mi audio dirac if you scroll down and they, this should work fine this does work fine and the sound output via bluetooth and the headphone jack as well is really good but there is also the dolby atmos again so this works super fine with dolby atmos or dolby audio you may call it that way and let me go back we have the notification vibration screenshot sound etc disabling option over here let me go to the vibration and haptics here we have the touch vibration vibrate for calls and this ringtone vibration pattern changing option now inside security here we have the figment option then face unlock option and the app lock is kind of on the launcher pre-enabled and i have locked some apps like telegram and as you can see if i open that it shows this hidden and protected apps so if i touch the fingerprint like over here right now as you can see right now it like lets me in 
and let me show you the finger mid scanner speed actually from the always on display right now and as you can see unlocked i'll double tap over here and let's try with the left hand thumb okay i went to the lock screen so there is your lock screen like finger mid scanner speed now i'll try from the always on display and as you can see it unlocked now i'll try with the like right hand thumb from the lock screen and unlocked now with night light turned on from always on display unlocked with the left thumb always on display unlocked now i'll do it with the lock screen with right hand thumb night light turned on unlocked now with the left thumb and from the lock screen night light turned on and it's still unlocked the fingerprint scanner is very reliable no issues that i faced over here with the fingerprint scanner at least now let me just quickly set up the face unlock here so it's done now i'll just double tap over here on the always on display to wake the device and as you can see it uses the face unlock and unlocks the device so that is very cool again as you can see it unlocks the device right away after i double tap i do not have to swipe up at least by default so if i enable this swipe to unlock feature right now if i double tap on the home screen then double tap and as you can see right now if i swipe up now it will unlock the device so yeah the face unlock is working fine so you can customize that too so that is really cool and talking about the wallpapers well there is only one which is this msm extended wallpaper that is like present by default and it is working totally fine of course now let me show you the app you know, speeds and the ram management over here on this rom so i'll open chrome youtube now twitter facebook play store instagram this google home spotify now while i'm opening these apps let me open the dnv info and show you guys and here as you can see it has the l1 security so that means you can use netflix or amazon prime internet ap on this rom and let me open the safety net check of course so that is one disappointing thing about this rom you cannot set up your google pay or any other banking apps over here because the safety net simply fails so you won't get to use your banking apps right out of the box and you have to or you might need to use magic hide to use banking apps on this rom now let's open all those apps from memory and as you can see they are still in memory it looks like facebook is in memory twitter is in memory play store still in memory youtube still in memory instagram is in memory google home is in memory spotify still in memory this dare in info and safety net check all the apps to stay in memory here so no issues with memory management and here is the android and geekbench score on this rom the daily driving performance of this rom is great but you cannot use banking apps on this rom right out of the box you got to keep that in mind and there is a little bit of issues while doing some app based callings like the duo based or like whatsapp callings and stuff there you might face some issues with your like microphone's audio to the other party so yeah that's how it is that's how this rom is working let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this msm extended rom thank you so much for watching this video guys do subscribe to the channel and if you haven't hit the thumbs up button of on this video do hit that and that wraps up this video guys thank you so much for watching again this is tiro from kdntx signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now